Over the years, we have seen multiple ways of using different operating systems at the same time. We have gone from having multiple different computers in the same room to dual booting systems to using virtual machines. But then Windows said, it's time to take it to the next level. Now we all know that with the launch of Windows 11, Microsoft released a feature of downloading and using Android apps from the Microsoft Store natively using Amazon App Store. They use a technology called Windows Subsystem for Android or WSA. To put it in simple words, Android apps are run using native Windows resources and other third-party resources like Amazon's. Now WSA was built similar to a previous feature that was mainly made for the developer community but was available to all Windows users. Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL. Now WSL has two versions, WSL 1 which was released on August 4th, 2016 and WSL 2 which was released in May 2019. The only difference between the two is that WSL 2 is more efficient and faster. So starting from five years ago, we have had the capability of running Linux natively on Windows, enabling us to run programs in one OS, which cannot be run on the other. Another added advantage of WSL for developers is that we can use all the Linux based utilities and features in VS Code. So how is WSL different from virtual machines? Well, virtual machines have a software layer between the main operating system and the OS which you are about to boot as the secondary operating system. But WSL natively uses the resources of the main operating system and runs faster requiring less space comparatively. For the later part of today's video, I'll be showing you how to activate WSL in your Windows systems followed by activating WSL in VS Code as well. To get started with, there are a few requirements. You must have Windows version of Windows 10 or higher and have enabled the virtual machine platform optional feature available on Windows that provides virtualization capabilities. This virtualization is required for WSL2 which has additional operating system requirements as follows. To enable the VM platform, open your PowerShell window as administrator and run the following command. This is available on the WSL docs on the Microsoft website, which I will link to in the description. Breaking tip time. Does your PowerShell window look like this? Use this app from the Microsoft store to substitute it with this. Ooh, and this one has tabs as well. So you can use WSL and PowerShell side by side. Now back to the video. All right, so now that we're done with the requirements, to enable WSL, go to your PowerShell window and type in the following command. By default, when you activate WSL for the first time, you will be using WSL1. In order to switch to WSL2, you will have to set it as the default setting. You can do that by opening PowerShell as administrator and typing in WSL set default version 2. Now it's time to choose your choice of distribution for Linux. Go to the Microsoft Store, search for Linux and choose from the distribution options that appear below. And that's it. Now you can use Linux on Windows using WSL. Also, here are some basic Linux commands to help you get started. Type in ls to list all the files and folders in your current directory. Use cd to navigate in and out of folders. Use mkdir to make a new folder. Use touch to create a new file. To remove a file, use rm and to remove a folder, use rmdir. And finally, to open VS Code, type in code. This will open VS Code with WSL enabled, where the primary terminal that is opened is a Linux terminal. That's it for today's video, guys. As I said, I will be listing all the documentation in the description below. Make sure to follow my Instagram for more updates on the channel. See you guys in my next video.